वेलकम टू इंजीनियरिंग फंडा फैमिली दिस वीडियो इज अ पार्ट ऑफ नेटवर्क थियोरी लेक्चर सीरीज एंड टुडे आई एल बी गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन यू किर्च ऑफ वोल्टेज लॉ इन दिस वीडियो सी टू एक्सप्लेन यू किर्च ऑफ वोल्टेज लॉ इन दिस वीडियो आई एल शो यू सम केस स्टडीज बाय दो केस स्टडीज यू विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ वी कैन आइडेंटिफाई करंट इन लूप एज वेल एज हाउ वी कैन आइडेंटिफाई वोल्टेज एट एनी पॉइंट in given loop so before we see case studies let us try to understand first what is kirchhoff voltage law so see kirchhoff voltage law states that algebraic sum of voltages in loop will be zero let me mention that first so kirchhoff voltage law states that algebraic sum of all voltages in loop must be equals to zero now see the meaning of algebraic that is polarity wise summation right now what is the meaning of polarity wise summation of voltages in the loop so let me explain you that for all elements so that will be more clear so what i'll do is first i'll consider one battery you see here i'm considering one battery and that is having positive terminal over here and negative terminal over here and let us say this battery is having voltage v now in this battery if you go in this direction then it will be opposing energy of this battery so if you move from plus to minus through this battery then this potential should be considered as minus v as it is opposing the energy of this battery but when you move from the direction of minus to plus at that time it is there in the direction of energy of this battery so that will be considered as plus v so this is first polarity that you should remember about now second that you need to understand it for resistor now through resistor if i say current is i so in that case there will be voltage drop that will happen across this resistor so the voltage which is considered in loop that will be minus as it is getting dropped through this resistor so minus i into r that should be the polarity if you have inductor and it is having inductance l then if i say current passing through inductor is i then voltage drop across inductor that should be considered as minus l di by dt if you have capacitor and if capacitance is c and if i say current passing through capacitor is i then voltage drop across capacitor that should be considered as minus 1 by c integration i dt so main thing that you need to focus about based on voltage where if you move from plus to minus then voltage should be negative if you move from minus to plus then voltage should be positive and as voltage is getting drop across elements that should be considered as negative as we know across resistor voltage is ir across inductor it is ldi by dt and across capacitor it is 1 by c integration i dt minus sign that you will have to keep now let us try to understand this kirchhoff current law by one practical example where i'll explain you case study of it so that will resolve your understanding further more now here we are having one loop you can observe and if i say in this loop current i is flowing like this right then we are dealing with to apply kvl in this loop so let us apply kvl in this loop now when you apply kvl in this loop then you see we have voltage source that is happening from minus to plus right so as it is happening from minus to plus you will have to consider that as plus v and voltage drop across resistance r1 that is i into r1 so that should be minus i into r1 voltage drop across r2 that is i into r2 but as per polarity it should be minus i into r2 voltage drop across r3 that is i into r3 so as per polarity it should be minus i into r3 and that is equals to 
zero, right? So this is how we can apply KVL. Now let me simplify this further. So you see what I am doing now. So here what I'll do is I'll keep this V on one side, and I'll I'll take all these elements on other side. Usually I do this practice when I solve problems based on mesh analysis and nodal analysis. So that's why I'm saying like you should keep that on other side. So if I keep this on other side, it will be I1 R1 plus I2 R2 plus I3 R3, right? So here you can observe that here we are having summation of voltage supply, and here we are having algebraic sum of voltage drop across element. So whenever you solve KVL equation at that time, what I request is you just see the direction of voltage source first. If it is happening from minus to plus, you consider that as plus, and if it is happening from plus to minus, then you should consider that as minus. And on other side, you should keep other elements and just do summation of it. So whatever equation that you will be having, that will be easier one to resolve unknown parameter. Now let us try to understand same thing in terms of how we can resolve potential at different nodes. So for that, what I'll do is I'll be going to consider values. So now what I'm doing is I'm considering this voltage is 10 voltage, this resistance is 5 ohm resistance, this resistance is 10 ohm resistance, and this resistance is. 15 ohm resistance. Now, what I'll be doing is I'll be calculating voltage at all these nodes, which I'm going to mention over here. So let us say this is node A. Let us say this is node B. Let us say this is node C. And let us say this is node D. So what we will do is now we will solve voltages at nodes, right? Now you see in this loop, we have only one voltage source. So obviously this positive plate that will be having plus 10 voltage. So I can say that VA is equals to 10 voltage, right? And at this node as negative means ground is connected, this VD voltage that should be zero voltage. Now how to identify voltage at B? So when you want to calculate voltage at B, then you see here we have VA voltage and from this 10 voltage somewhat voltage is getting dropped across R1 and that dropped voltage will be I into R1. So we need to cal calculate first the value of I. So here if you apply KVL in this loop then you will be having 10 is equals to phi into I for this R1, then 10 into I for this R2 plus 15 into I for this R3. So you will be having 10 is equals to 5 plus 10 plus 15. So that is 30 I. So I can say that I is equals to 10 by 30. So that is 0 0.33 ampere. Now, as if I want to calculate voltage at terminal B, then that will be voltage at terminal A minus voltage drop across R1. So the, as per the loop, you can go in this direction, right? So that will be 10 minus phi into 0 0.33. So phi into 0 0.33, that is 1.66. So this will be 8.33 voltage. Now, if you want to calculate voltage at terminal C, then voltage at terminal C, that will be voltage at terminal B minus voltage drop across R2. So voltage at terminal B is 8.33 minus voltage drop across R2, that is 10 into 0 0.33. So this will be 8.33 minus 3.33. So that means it will be 5 voltage. Now, if you want to calculate voltage at D, then you see voltage at D will be voltage at C minus voltage drop across R3. 
so that will be 5 minus 15 into 0 0.33 so 15 into 0 0.33 that is 5 only 5 minus 5 that is 0 so that is how we can identify voltage at any terminal by using kvl right i hope you have understood this thank you so much for watching this video still if you have any further queries you just place that in comment box i'll be happy to help you